I'd like you to imagine you're at the DMV. Yes, you heard me correctly. You're at the Department of Motor Vehicles or the DMV. You lost your old ID and now you need a new one. Now here in California, the DMV is the last place you wanna be. We all know we've avoided this annoying task for as long as we can. Everything's stressed, chaotic, everyone's agitated. You're trying so hard to listen to the person in front of you, giving you instructions for where to go next, what to do next. When you finally get to the top of the first line, you realize this is only the first of a series of steps, the first of a series of lines that you'll have to get through to accomplish your task. Now, what if I told you the same skills that you use in the DMV you use to follow teacher's instructions in elementary school. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Those are two way different situations. You're right about that. Would you believe me if I told you use the same skills in the two settings pictured here? What well, looks to be something like a lecture hall and a fourth grade classroom. Okay, maybe you're starting to believe me or maybe I still have some convincing to do. That's okay, that's what I'm here to do today to convince you. The set of skills that I'm referring to in all of these scenarios are called executive function skills. Executive function skills are incredibly important for our everyday lives. Now, executive functioning is a sort of umbrella term to describe the cognitive components of um, the things, the uh, working memory, the actions we use in order to inhibit impulses, in order to reduce challenging behaviors. We use executive functioning in order to meet tasks, goals. What I'm telling you is that executive function skills are essential ingredients in being a successful student, an attentive friend, and a reliable employee. Unfortunately, executive functioning is a challenging topic for individuals with ADHD. It's actually a primary symptom of ADHD. This means that individuals with ADHD tend to experience extreme distress in managing time, right? In completing tasks in order to meet goals, especially long-term goals. This makes uh, daily tasks in work, at home, at school, particularly challenging, right? In 2022, the World Health Organization collected data from around the world to see how many students in college had ADHD. They found that about 15% of students around the world had ADHD in college. That number is even higher for students with ADHD in the US. And why does this matter? Well, ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, which means that individuals uh, start to experience symptoms in early childhood, and those symptoms continue on into adulthood. For a really long time, researchers were paying special attention to the challenges that people were experiencing in, adult, in childhood. However, we've just begun in the last decade to think about what's going on in adulthood. Now, when most people are discussing executive functioning, they're thinking about performance-based tasks, right? Those are the computerized tasks that we use to either get college students really, really bored by responding to the same stimuli for 10 minutes on a black and white screen, it's incredibly boring, <laughs> or sometimes it's more interesting. We're asking whether you can flex with rules, make decisions. Those are something like a simulated gambling task. <laughs> so, Many people use performance-based tasks to look at executive functioning. This means we've had, we've had a lot of tasks. We paid special attention to what executive functioning looks in a lab-based way, in a really, really clean way, right? What I'm most interested in and where the field is sort of lagging at this point is what executive function challenges look like in our everyday lives, right? Executive functioning is important for paying attention to someone at the DMV. Use executive function skills to manage your time. Use executive function skills to um, sort of pay attention to me right now. Probably, they probably got you here on time. And I'm interested in ex uh, measuring executive functioning in our everyday lives, right? The challenges of executive functioning. So how do we do this? How do we measure executive functioning in our everyday lives how do we support kids earlier on before college? Because current data suggests that individuals with ADHD are being identified later and later due to the sort of 
unique challenges in emerging adulthood, right? We've just begun to leave our house <laughs> away from our parents. We have social independence, financial independence. We're now being asked to make huge decisions like what's your major, what's your new career? All of these things sort of sometimes push people to realize, hmm, like maybe these challenges aren't something that everyone experiences. Why am I having such trouble in lecture hall when I'm, you know, for the first time really asked to regulate my tension independently? Why am I maybe having trouble um, with substance use? You have trouble with impulsivity, right? Stopping the things th that you might not want to do in order to follow rules and laws. So college sort of sets us up for what I like to call an executive function training ground. And people end up sort of realizing that the challenges that they have might be more than other challenges that other people have in these respects, right? And so what do we do about late identification? Well, late identification for ADHD really matters because people go on with their lives sort of wondering why they might be different from other people, why they not be able to complete um, goals, manage their time effectively, why they keep saying the wrong thing or blurting out to their friends, which doesn't really help make friends, right? And I'm here to provide sort of a solution. I'm kind of um, proposing a solution. My dissertation proposes a solution to identify students with executive function challenges earlier on. I will, I, do, I will do this by employing an executive function screening system. What's a screening system, you ask? Well, a screening system is this sort of system where we ask students, teachers, parents, all of them to complete short questionnaires to assess all their all strengths and weaknesses. Schools are still trying to figure out the most efficient and effective ways of identifying the students who need extra support. I sort of used this and found that the missing piece in most social emotional screening landscapes in schools is executive functioning. Executive functioning is related to anxiety, depression, substance use, impulsivity, academic difficulties even. So it sort of blew my mind that we're not paying attention to this in school, right? Especially because executive functioning is closely related to many of the outcomes that we pay attention to in school. So what I've done is sort of design an executive function screening system to be delivered in late elementary school. Why late elementary school? Because middle school poses a really special set of challenges, right? I'm sure you're all familiar with the challenges in middle school. I probably don't have to tell you about the social and emotional challenges like changes in peer networks, increased exposure to risky behaviors. We suddenly can't handle our parents, am I right? And there comes also these sort of executive function challenges. Again, another executive function training gown at this transition to a new stage of life. We, this is the first time that we have multiple classes, which means more teachers, more deadlines, more books to keep track of. Now you have to keep track of a locker combination. All of these are sort of culmination of executive function skills that we need to be successful in middle school, right? It takes time for schools to implement many of the things that we propose in research. So my idea was to identify students in late elementary school in order to match students up with the right tools before they get to middle school so that they can practice these strategies in order to support their academic difficulties as well as their um, internalizing and externalizing problems. Now, what I argue here is that early detection of executive function skills is critical to matching students up with the right tools before they really start to struggle in middle school, in high school, in college, and so on. Thank you.